In this lesson, we'll do a brief introduction into buying a home. More importantly, how the mortgage formula to calculate your payment works. The idea of a mortgage is it's a huge amount of money used to cover nearly the full selling price of a house that you're interested in buying. It's very important to make your mortgage payment because if you don't, your lender can take your home away, regardless of what you've paid for. To buy a home, you generally have to make a down payment. You must have cash. There's a lot of interesting documentation on to how you get that down payment because you are not allowed to borrow the down payment. You either have to have it in the bank based on paychecks, or if you get it from somebody else, they have to write a letter to you saying it was a gift, etc. On top of that, there's generally closing costs that you may have to pay, or the seller might be willing to pay, or perhaps some sort of split could occur. There's also purchasing points, which cost you more money up front, but saves you money over time. Let's talk about how the payments work. The APR of your mortgage is something that you could get from your mortgage company that takes into account the actual closing costs and what it is as a percentage of what you're paying. It can be a little bit different, but the quoted interest rate, the actual interest rate that you're paying, is what's going to calculate your actual payment. The APR is meaningful to make a comparison between different mortgage companies, but what you really want to know is what is the interest rate on your loan, because that will make a drastic change in how much money you will pay. Your monthly payment, then, is determined by a few things. The length of your loan, your down payment, and the interest rate. If you have a longer loan, or a higher down payment, or a lower interest rate, you won't have to pay as much per month. However, the longer you pay for a loan, the more money you're going to pay in the long run. Here's some basic data of a $120,000 mortgage with an 8% interest rate. The percent down payments here will give you an idea of how much money you could pay up front of that 120000 I will stick with the 5% for what I want to look at. At 5%, if you have 20 years worth of payments, you end up paying $953.54 per month. At 25 years, it's $879.87 per month. At 30 years, you'll notice that these prices are going down. The amount that you have to pay each month is lower. But there is a bad trade-off. Look at how much money you pay back in that time period. Remember, this home costs you $120,000. You're paying 8% interest, and the longer you pay that interest, the more money you pay overall. On a 20-year loan, you have to pay a little bit more each month, and then you end up paying nearly double the amount of your house after 20 years. On a 25-year plan, you pay more than double. On a 30-year plan, you're paying about two and a half times the amount of money that you should have had to pay on that house. It gets expensive quickly, so if you can, try to make a higher payment overall to save money on your house. The thing is, though, if you do get a 30-year loan, you can pay it off quicker and then avoid this problem as well. To calculate the way that your mortgage works, you take the full amount that you owe that month, which is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars at the beginning, and you multiply that by a monthly interest rate. That'll amount to several hundred dollars. Then you'll make a payment that covers all of that interest plus some portion of the principal. So your payment's going to be higher than the amount of interest all the time, or else you'd never make any progress. But the idea is you do pay the interest up front. The lower your principal gets, the less interest you're paying, but you're still paying the same payment, which means that the more you pay, the more of it is going onto your principal, and that helps you start paying things faster at the end, but at the beginning you're paying mostly interest. There's a special formula that you can use for calculating a monthly mortgage payment, and I want to carefully take you through the process of using this formula. I like this version of the formula because this is easier for a human with a calculator to do. However, this particular formula is a little bit better if you have tables. Anyway, there's a few values that we need to know. You've got your usual P is the principal. Lowercase r is the interest rate, which is not in the formula right now, you'll notice. And T is still the number of years, also not in the formula. But when we use this formula, we use this capital R, which is the monthly interest rate, and this capital N, which is the total number of payments. 
To find the monthly interest rate, we'll take our usual annual interest rate and divide it by 12. To find the total number of payments, we'll take the number of years and multiply it by 12 to convert it to months. Let's see if we can verify one of these values. A $120,000 mortgage at 8% for 30 years had a payment of $880.52. Let's see if we can verify that using this formula. And I'm going to do this in two halves because we're also asked to do it with a much smaller interest rate of 4% just to see how big of a difference that will make. Let's highlight a few values here. This value is P. The 8% is your lowercase r and the 30 is your T. The first thing we should do is calculate capital R which is 0 .08 divided by 12 now I recommend don't round this value if possible. I get 0, 0.00 and let's just put a few sixes here. Get about 10 or so digits. I don't know if I've got 10. I've got 9. That's okay. Get plenty of accuracy here. And then N and then N is the total number of payments, monthly payments in this case. 12 times 30 would be 360. Now let's go into the formula. 120,000 times that R value. Let's just put a few digits in here. And then we've got this guy. 1 over 1 plus this R value raised to the N minus 1 plus 1. It looks daunting, but let me take you through the steps. We're going to do our order of operations, and the first step that I suggest is calculate the denominator of this fraction. So you would say 1 plus this value, which unsurprisingly is 1.00666667, and then you'll take that 1.00 with a bunch of 6's and raise it to the 360th power. Now there's a few keys you should know about. On a calculator, you probably have one of these four buttons that mean exponent. What you do is you take the number, hit the exponent key, type in 360, and then hit the enter or equals button. So I will take 1.00 with all those sixes, and I will raise it using my exponent key to the 360th power. When I do that, I get 10.935 and some more numbers. That is the inside of my parentheses raised to the 360th power and so now I'm just going to type minus 1. This 9.935 number I'll write on the next line. And here's all my digits that come out of it. The next thing you need to do is do 1 divided by that number. Your calculator may have a 1 over x key and if you push that button and it's the right kind of calculator is what I'm thinking it'll quickly calculate 1 divided by that number for you and I get 0 0.10064 and so on. If it doesn't work that well for you, you can just simply type 1 divided by in your calculator and then type in this number again. Either way, you should get 0 0.10064 and then some more stuff and I'm going to add 1 to that number to get 1.10064 and so on. Let's write that in our next step. Now we'll just multiply these three numbers together and that should get us our payment. And sure enough, I get $880.52 for the payment. Great! If you had any trouble with that, try going back and looking through my details, following carefully along with the numbers I get once again. Now let's do it for 4%. You'll have the same value of N, but we get a new value for R, because now we're doing 4% for this problem. And I get 0, 0.00 and a bunch of threes. Let's just write it like that this time to make this a little bit shorter. N will be the same thing because we're still doing 30 years. And then let's plug it all in and see what we get. 120,000 is your principal. Your rate is this 0, 0.003 repeating. You could even leave it as 0.04 divided by 12 somewhere in the process. That way you won't miss any precision whatsoever. And then in the denominator, I have 1 plus this number 
raised to the 360th power, minus 1. That's all with a 1 over that, a plus 1 on the outside, and then we'll go through the same steps as we did before. We'll take what's in the parentheses and add it together to get 1 plus 0 0.00333 repeating. Hit your exponent key and then raise that to the 360th power. When I do that, I get 3.313498 and so on. Let me subtract 1 from that to get that my denominator will be a 2.313498 number. Let's copy that down. Now, just like last time, if you're one of our X key works, feel free to use it. If it doesn't work, just do 1 divided by that number manually, but again, don't round. Write all the digits that you have available. When I do the 1 over X, I get 0 0.4322. I'll add 1 to that to get a 1.4322. Let's copy that down as well. Now, if we multiply these numbers together, we'll get our answer. For mine, I get $572, and it's an 898, so mine rounds up to 90 cents. Now that is significantly lower. This just goes to show how much money you save on your payment by having a lower interest rate. If you can, get as low of an interest rate as possible when you take out a mortgage. Just as one final note, if you know the payment that you can afford and you know the interest rate that you can get, you could potentially use this formula to help you figure out what's the highest price you can afford to pay for a house so that you would be able to make the payment. And a real estate agent would definitely be able to help you in this process.